never see him do that before. Whatever they're after must be down in that gully. Down there uh, must be a dead man. Uh, they don't pull like that for no dead man. Uh, Ray! Lon! Lon, give us a hand! Let's go down after him. Jim! Hey, Bill! I don't know why you don't just tell him. Because I know what he'll say. The world's in such a mess, it's unfair to oh, bring a child crap. into it, that there are three million unwanted children. But the fact is, Maggie, you're pregnant. And it's your body and it's your choice. And if what you want to do in this world is make a beautiful baby, then nobody, including a cynical husband, has the right to stand in your way. He's not cynical. Obsessed. He's dedicated. Dedicated, obsessed, call it what you like. But if you get talked into an abortion you don't want, you'll never forgive yourself. Why don't you get it over with? Go home and tell him. 
I need to pick the right time. When the news is first, when we speak in a single voice, they will listen. We have heard that the Indian must fight to keep what he seeks. And the time has come again. We will fight to keep our borders. showed it to the man. He said it was chicken pop. Okay. I said to him, there's rats in here. He said, this is chicken pop. I said to him, ain't no chickens in here. There's rats in here. And them rats bit my baby. And you know what he said to me? He said, the rats got to have room to live, too. Does he live in this building, your landlord? No, sir. He lives in Georgetown. He lives with the rich rats up there. I'm gonna have to put your baby in a hospital. And then I'm gonna be in touch with your landlord. How about putting my landlord in the hospital? That's what I'd like to do. So would I. Well, let's take care of your baby first, okay? What are you doing here? Looking for you. Will you ride back with me? Yeah, uh, take him to emergency. You really look tired. Yeah. The hour's getting to you? Not the hours, it's a damn futility. I'll write a report here. No one will read. I'll file a lawsuit against a landlord that'll be settled out of court. Send that baby to the hospital for a couple of days so he can come back here and be eaten by rats again. I feel like I'm banging my head up against a wall. I don't think anybody's listening. You want to know something? If I could have planned your side of this conversation, I couldn't have done it better. Remember that hearing I asked you to come to this morning? Sorry. Sorry. It was the Bureau of Indian Affairs. They're listening to the complaints of a couple of tribes from Maine. They're about to get squeezed the way the people in these tenements are. Like these people are? Are you crazy, Vic? I saw the demonstrators all right, this morning. All right, all right, all right. Listen to me. Listen to me. This paper company, the Pitney Mills Paper Company, bought the timber rights to 100,000 acres of forest in Maine. The Indians claim the land is theirs. And they blockaded access to the forest, keeping the lumberjacks out. The Supreme Court's filed a restraining order against the blockade. Everybody's ready to kill each other. And the whole thing is holding for an environmental protection report. What does the Environmental Protection Agency have to do with a land dispute? Nobody wants to rule on the legalities of who owns the land. So they're trying to break the deadlock on environmental grounds. If we file a negative report, then the lumber company won't have much reason to proceed. If we file a positive report, the Indians will probably have to give way. Another political football. If you're looking for a job that's got permanent impact, this is the one. I mean, you're going to set a precedent that'll be very hard to break. Rick, it's not my game. I'm strictly a rat bite and gas leak man. I can teach you what you need to know. I can give you the books to take up with you. I'm in public health. I'm a doctor. And you know how to deal with human beings. The Indians are angry, and so is the lumber company. If we don't get full cooperation from both of them, we're going to have a lot of trouble getting enough information for a thorough report. I got all the tree experts I need. I need someone who can, who can deal with people. Come on, come on, it's two weeks of your time. Take Maggie along. It'll be good for both of you to get away. 
Exactly. We're going to be in a cabin. We're going to be outside by a river. Hey, great. And it's going to take three days to walk down there. Sounds hard. Yeah, but that's the fun. What is that? Look! This thing I've ever seen. What do you think you're doing? This is Burns. Mr. Isley, 50 Lumber Company. How do you do? Have a nice flight. Indeed. Yeah, and my wife, Maggie, Mr. Isley. Welcome to the state of Maine, Mrs. Hello. Burns. Castle? Well, I got a car for you, like your office wanted. Somebody to drive it, so you can ride up the lake with me. Fine. That's, uh, that a Rogeri? Montagna. You know Tillos. Well, I know wood. <laughs> That's got a balsam back and a spruce belly and a maple bridge. Three different kinds of trees in there. Very impressive. Yeah, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, though. Hold it! Excuse me. Here you go. That's the biggest fiddle you ever saw. No, yes, sir. No, no, no. Excuse me, what's that dog yeah. doing up in the air? Oh, that's what's left of our search and rescue team. Secure that well. Take your pardon, I don't quite understand. Oh, a couple of men got lost up in the mountains. Men from our company, as a matter of fact. Lumberjacks. They sent up the search team from Androscoggin, go looking for them. A couple of days later, one of the search you know, dogs shows can, up at a ranger station. No sign of the people who brought her in there. What do you suppose happened to them? That's well, I guess they got lost, too. A rescue team? Is that possible? Look, I'll be truthful with you. This particular forest isn't too safe right now. Why is that? Excuse me, Rob, you'd like to buy your bag. That's OK. Well, the Indians, they're angry in there. They're trying to keep the lumber company out any way they can. People start disappearing, and the Indians spread the word that uh, they were taken by Katahdin. That's one of their legends. They call it Katahdin. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a Bigfoot, I guess. Only it's uglier. Yeah, it's larger than a dragon and got the eyes of a cat. <laughs> yeah, they've thrown in everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, my wife oh. put together a box of groceries for you. Yes, thank you. I saw that. I guess you're going to have everything you're going to need. Yeah. You follow me in there, Kelso. Right, See, the idea of this legend is to frighten the lumberjacks out. They're almost as superstitious as the Opies. Yeah, Opie, Opies. Uh, Opie, oh, Opies, original people. Yeah, that's, that's what they call themselves now. The Ashinabigs, Passamaquoddy, Wampanoags, and the Yurok's, they all joined together, call themselves the Opies. Mr. Byrne? What about those people, the ones who disappeared? Well, I'll tell you something. If you ask me, I wouldn't have sent a search team in there. I had to send a posse. Why is that? Do you think the Indians did it? No doubt in my mind. There's a general store, post office, and laundromat, Mrs. Byrne. Believe you 
money in that bank there if you want it. You know all this stuff about the paper companies ruining the forest? That's pure myth. We've been running a pulp operation in the upper SB here for 20 years now. We plant seedlings every time we harvest. That land is more stable today than it was when God himself made it. Well, to give him his due, he didn't have modern science to help him. He didn't have hydroponics and silviculture techniques. I'd say he did pretty well under the circumstances. What with his limited education? <laughs> yeah. These people are from the Environmental Protection Agency. I'd appreciate being let through. No car from the lumber company gets through here. This is against the law, John. The law has not brought justice. The Supreme Court has issued a restraining order against this blockade. Yeah, which Supreme Court is that, Mr. Osley? The Supreme Court of the United States. Yes, we've tried that Supreme Court. Now we're going to one that's higher. You a part of this, Ramona? By birth, Mr. Osley. Can we walk in? It's ten miles. Is there another road? No, Mrs. Vern, there isn't. John, tell your people to get out of the way. Kelso! Cut down those two trees, please. I don't get the right, point. What are you worry, trying to prove? Going to get hurt. The point is not to be intimidated. Cut him down. Don't let this happen. Are you going to stand aside, Hawk? I'm going to tell you right now. You cut my head off before you cut these trees. Oh, come on. Take him down! Wait a minute! Wait a minute!
chain, John. Don't open it. Open it. God damn it, but I'll just prove anyway. Get their murderers. No, it doesn't prove a damn thing. Now open it. No. Open it. These are violent people, Mr. Byrne. They get drunk and they get violent. You gotta show them when you mean business. Maggie, that must have been a world's record. I've never heard of such a big salmon. Well, this is the land of Paul Bunyan. There's Giant Ox Bay. Was that Maine? Sure was. Well, there might be something to it. That fish was a giant. Maybe you'll go home with a trophy. <laughs> Can't get over it. God knows what would happen if I hooked into it. Mm. Taste this. Mm. Aphrodisia. You think you could? Catch any more? Are you kidding? I'm one of the world's great fishermen. Well, you fish and I'll eat. <laughs> now that's a relationship.
want to know something? I was so proud of you today. Uh, that made the ghetto seem suddenly very peaceful to me. You know something else? I was jealous of that Indian woman. She had so much courage to be so strong when she was frightened, to demand her own way. It's the kind of courage I don't have much of. Oh, I don't know about that. I think it takes a lot of courage to put up with me. I love you. I love you so much, I wish there were more of you. Well, I could easily put on 20 pounds. I mean, I wish there were more of us. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's something I want to discuss. No. Why not now? Everything's so perfect. You know how I feel. When I was a child, my mother told me I'd eat everything on my plate because there were starving children in the world. It didn't make any sense to me. Now, you tell me I mustn't get pregnant because there are starving children in the world, and that doesn't make any sense to me either. It does to me. You're afraid, aren't you? I don't know. I don't know about a lot of things anymore. I feel like I've been going round and around a racetrack a hundred miles an hour. I wound up where I started. No one else was in the race. I love you. I love you. I love you. Dad. Turn that thing off. But you said I could play it for another 10 minutes. Just turn it off. Turn it on again?
a clay basin. I'm sending samples on tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, listen, Vic. I'm including a couple of uh, tissue samples from the raccoon. Check them out for me, will you? No, I examined them, but... No, it wasn't rabies. I don't know what it is, but... There's definitely something wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you should be. Well, she's fine. Talk to you Tuesday. Mr. Vern. My name is John Hawks. I remember. I'd like you to come with us, if you would. What for? I want to speak with you. Right here will be fine. Are you afraid of us? Somewhat. Because of what you've heard. No, it's not what I've heard, but what we've I've seen. We've heard we're drunks, we're violent, and that we're murderers. And that's what they're saying about us in Washington, because they're discounting our rights with these lies. I can understand how you must feel, but my work here has nothing to do with Are the politics. Like the rest. If I'm a fairly well-educated person, Mr. Vern, I was educated at your schools. I studied your laws. I perfected your language. Of course, your laws have never really applied to us, but um, your language, it seems to have been wasted in the Indian's mouth because uh, well, you refuse to hear. Why is it you refuse to hear? Oh, I can hear. But I can also see. You seem surprised that people think you're violent. The violence you saw was provoked. By whom? It was necessary. It was suicidal. Tell me, uh, for what you believe in. You willing to die? Look, I'm here to study the environment. I'm curious, what's your concept of the environment, Mr. Vern? Is it rocks? Oh, come on. If this conquers the environment is us. And it's being mangled. And I'm going to make something clear to you. My people are violently ill. They're beginning to lose their faculties. They stagger, and they fall. And this has nothing to do with alcohol, as these villagers claim. My people are fishermen. Their lives are clean. I'm a midwife. And I've seen children born dead, born deformed. So badly, some have had to be put to death. Three times we have been to the government, and three times they've turned us away. You see, the end of this forest is the end of my people. Don't talk about the environment as though it had nothing to do with us. These people want us to go with them. They have some things they want to show us. I think we should go. Is this your village? No. This is the home of Hector Marai. My grandfather. It's the last remnant of how my people once lived. I wanted you to see this before you um, see what we've become. My grandfather built this place, and to him it's very sacred. These are the people from the government. How many? Well, there are two of us, sir. Is that enough? Well, we're... Uh, Working very hard. That good. Your home is very beautiful. Thank you. Don't mistake these tents for his home. His home was this whole forest. You know, 
Just three days ago, I was visiting a place where there are 11 people living in a single room. Oh, yes. I just thought you should know. But that we are asking too much. That there are people in this world fighting for a single inch of living space. Yes, because they fought too late. This camp is as the old people did it. I'm teaching these young people so that someone here will remember. There are underground tunnels beneath the frost line to store perishables. The forest provides more food than a man could possibly need. Here, everything grows big. Real big. Well, I saw a salmon that uh, took my breath away. It is the Garden of Eden. I've let no one come here. You are the first to see it. It's magical. We were once a magical people. It's true. When I was a child, every rock, every tree had a story. The whole forest was filled with legends. We heard about one of them. Yes? Ah, uh, Kitty does something. Katahdin. Katahdin is no legend. My grandfather is the oldest person in our tribe. It's his duty to foster these beliefs. I have seen him. And what does he look like? He is part of all things created, and he bears a mark of each of God's creatures. You say that with great affection. He has wakened to protect us. Why are these logs in here? They come twice each year. Then they disappear. What is that? So quickly, Mitui. Ikhokwe, aninushtufukhan aukwe. He says he will show you why he calls it the Garden of Eden. Feeder roots, they should be underground. Here. It's a tadpole. I told you things grow big here. You've seen this before? No. No one has seen them. They're only in this farm. What does this pond feed into? The SP River. That's where the paper mill is. Unfit for lumber yards is cut into sections and fed down this channel into the grinding machine. It's a very simple process and a very conventional industry. We even use stone grinders to turn the logs into pulp. Uh, oh, let me give you a hand here, Mrs. Bird.
of hope is bleached. With the exception of grocery bags, nobody likes paper that isn't white. What do you use to bleach it with? Chlorine. It stays right here in the plant. None of it goes out into the water? No, sir. Not a drop. I'd like to see more. This way. When the Pope gets down here, it's pressed into sheets and dried into paper. You feel all right? All right. You better stand over here, Mrs. Byrne. That sheet's traveling 3,000 feet a minute. Now, you see, the Pope is fibrous. When it's dry, those fibers in the connect form in the solid. And the only chemical you use in this plant is chlorine? Yeah. Oh, no. Excuse me. There's a caustic solution that's used in the, uh, the grinding process. But it's biodegradable, approved by the EPA, and it doesn't go into the watershed. That's it, Mrs. Byrne. Thank you. Well, clean as a whistle, huh? Thank you, sir. Tell me something. Yeah. What happens to the trees before they get here? They get floated down the river to the plant here. That's it. You don't hold them anywhere? Yeah, if we get stacked up. Where do you hold them? Oh, various places. Ponds? You hold them in ponds? Probably. Softens them up and soak them. Do you, uh, soak them in chemicals? Well, you're getting out of my area here. Transport's handled by a private contractor. I ask you a question. Well, I'm answering your question. You're responsible for whatever effluent goes out of this plant. You hire the contractors, you sell the product, you're accountable for what, whatever goes on here. Rob, stop. Now, just... uh, how, how, uh, how many pages in this report you're going to write? I ask you a question. Now, let me ask you a question. How many pages? A hundred? How many copies? A thousand, maybe? I want to know what chemicals you're using. We're talking about 100,000 pieces of paper just for your report. Am I far off? Huh? And uh, how, how, how many sheets of paper are those other filing cabinets in Washington? You're not answering me. I am answering you. Now, I supply, but you demand. You're responsible, too. Now, unless you want to start filling your filing cabinets with rocks and wiping your nose with cactus... I want to know what you soaked the logs in. What chemical? None. I don't believe that. Well, well then you take water samples. That's what we do. Yes, sir. Now, look. If those logs were soaked in chemicals, it would squeeze out in the pumping process right under the watershed in front of this plant. Now, we test that water every 10 days, and there's not a damn thing floating out there that we don't know about or anything that's harmful to the environment. Now, excuse me, Mrs. Byrne. Go on, go test the water. We got nothing to hide. Right now, just it in here. I told you to watch the tide. Yeah. You okay? Hold the boat. Let's get him in here. Get him out of here. Sorry about that. I didn't uh, realize. Oh, yeah. I know you did. My fault. Let's go, boys. Move it out. to let you test the water. Maybe it wasn't in the water. Huh? Maybe it's heavier than water. That silvery stuff on your boot. Is it dry? Yes. They gave us a trick question in medical school. What's the only liquid in the world that isn't wet? What was the answer? Mercury. Organic methyl mercury known as 
PMT, used as a desliming agent that collects algae and prevents it from forming on pre-processed timber. Its widespread use discontinued in 1956 when evidence of its fatal effects was seen in the deaths of 100,000 people in Minamata, Japan. what it is. This whole place has been contaminated. How do you know? The Indians eat the fish. And they behave like they're drunk when they haven't had a drop of liquor. That raccoon convulsing and turning vicious, its brain turned to mush. Even that old man, that Indian, you saw the burns on his fingers. Is that from mercury? It's from cigarettes. The reason he didn't feel it's from mercury. You see, it acts on the nervous system. It destroys the brain. Why are they using it? Why? Listen to this. Described as the most potent neurotoxin of the post-World War II age. Listen. Used from 1948 to 1956. In pulping processes as a cheap and effective caustic agent. That's why they use it, because it's cheap. Forming on waterlogged timber. It is also known for its mutagenic properties. Concentrating in the bodies of fish and plankton eating crustacea, affecting the fetal development of everything that ingests it. For 20 years it's been pouring into this water. Toxin to blood level it's in the fish, is that it? Higher the everything that eats the fish. Than in the host. It was discovered after extensive testing that it is the only mutagen that jumps the placental barrier concentrating in fetal blood cells where it adheres to the DNA and drops the chromosome. The ratio of toxin to blood level is 30% higher in the developing fetus than in the host. It was discovered after extensive testing that it is the only mutagen that jumps the placental barrier, concentrating in fetal blood cells where it adheres to the DNA and corrupts the chromosomes. Jumps the placental barrier? What does that mean? It's a mutagen. A mutagen? What is that? Freakism. Freakism. That's what's been going on out there. That's why there's a goddamn salmon five feet long and a tadpole the size of what a bullfrog should be. And still burns. What? That's what that Indian woman said. And to form children. God knows what else has been going on out there. So if a pregnant animal ate some fish, it could... Yes. My God. Is it possible? Yes. The size of a dragon. What? Isn't that what Isley said at the airport? And something about eyes, cat's eyes. And the, the old man, the Indian, didn't he describe that creature as being uh, part of everything in God's creation? Isn't that what he said? Yes. Put this together. Uh, developing fetus goes through certain distinct... A developing fetus goes through certain distinct phases. Each phase represents a specific stage of evolution. A human fetus, for instance, uh, at one stage it's a fish. Well, it looks like a fish, it's got fins and gills. At another it's amphibian, webbed hands. At another, reptilian. At another it's feline, developing upward in the distinct shapes and phases of the evolutionary scale. Uh, this chemical, methyl mercury, adheres to the DNA. DNA's a chromosomal fixative. It could freeze certain parts at one evolutionary stage while the other parts continue growing. You follow? Yes. Um, a pregnant animal ingests the fish 
and it corrupts the fetus to the point where it gives birth to a monster. Corrupts the fetus to the point where it gives birth to a monster. How much fish would it take for? It concentrates in the fetal blood cells. How much? A very little. I'll need proof. You're not sure? Well, I've got to get blood samples. Our first priority is these people. How long before you'll know? A week, 10 days. Thank you. Mike? Mike Greenbrier. How old are you? On here. There were more killings in the forest last night. We're not waiting for any more. Who was killed? The family up at Mary's Bend. What makes you think these people have anything to do with it? They're guilty as hell, Vern. I want the following people to step forward. As their names are in. John Hawks. You heard Where's him. the evidence? Let's go. The evidence is at the hospital. Just a it's in baskets. Mr. Hawks, are you gonna step forward? Well, Hawks, you gonna step forward as instructed? Ten minutes at the most! 
from up there. No. What is it then? You know this part. What could it be? John! I can't clear those trees. Sure hope you and your friends don't mind walking out of here. Remember we talked about those poachers? See those nets over there? They string them across the river and catch everything that comes down. Save your people and this forest. John, get the other one. Let's get out of here. No way. What do you mean? You see those trees? That's 40 miles an hour. I gotta get some place floor. So what do we do? Shelter. Time. I've got to get this thing back or it'll die. What is that? Never mind. Come on. I warn you. Come on. Down. I've got to get this thing warm. How far is your village? Too far. Ten miles. Is there something else? Someplace else? My grandfather. Tents? It's only half a mile. Look. I need some place where it's warm. Where I can work on this thing to keep we it alive. We can get fire to die. can make it warm. Let's go there. There's no other choice. Okay, let's go.
Someone from the village. Sir, yeah. Tell them to get people here. I want people to see this. Is there a newspaper in town? Yes. Get them here with a camera. And people from that paper mill and that sheriff. Not that sheriff. I can't do that. Honks. He'll see the truth here. And you have more at stake in this truth than I have. Please, hurry. Can you get that lantern above the table? <laughs> Will it die? I don't know. I hope to keep its heart beating with a little adrenaline. Do you want some rags? Yeah, not too hot, not steamy. Nothing down there but dirt. Any supplies? Not any of that. Let's see. What I could really use is a sterile jar. I've got a jar of vitamins in my pack. Stop it. I don't dare sedate it. Here's the rag. That'll help. Here's your jar. Okay. Maggie? Maggie? Yes? In my bag? Some surgical tubing? It's a nightmare, okay? It'll be over soon. Get out of here in the morning. Go home tomorrow. You know what that old man said about this creature awakening to protect them? Strangely, that's true. This is gonna stop what's going on. People can't ignore it anymore. There's a reason. The reason it's happened is a reason why we're here. I'm pregnant. What? I'm pregnant. And I ate what the mother of those creatures ate. It's not a nightmare that's going to end. It's just beginning because it's inside me. Why didn't I know? You didn't want to know. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. You were too busy playing God to be a human being. I thought having a baby would bring us closer together. It's not baby anymore. <laughs> Maggie. 
I'll stay in the tunnels until they're gone. Mr. Byrne! What's the meaning of this? It's the answer, Mr. Isley. To some very... Important questions. This is a result of methyl mercury spilling out of your plant.
Hawks, the pilot's barely alive. We've got to get him to town. The town is too far. It's 12 miles. Our village is closer. He's in a coma. Can we carry him that far? I can make a stretcher to carry that pilot. Will it be a car in the village? No, but there's shelter there, and we can send for help. It'll take too long. If we send someone from the village, by the time they get back, we'll be looking <coughs> at nightfall again. Now, what's the alternative? Who knows when that damn thing will come back? What about the helicopter? There's a radio in there. No, it doesn't work unless it's up in the air. Now, there's a microwave tower. It's on the top of Mount Emery. Controls all the communication in this area. How far is that? Oh, six, seven miles, maybe. You can't walk six miles through the forest not knowing where that damn thing is. I can. You go to the village. I'll go there. If I can make contact, you'll be out of here by nightfall. Now, let me, let me do this now. taken everything. Where can we put him? Let's take him inside.
We better try for town. He's delirious. Well, I don't want to spend the night here. Hey, listen, three quarters of a mile from here where they cut the trees. To let the carrier. The carrier. It's like a tank. It's used for moving equipment. It'll go through anything. Will it run? There are tools in the cabin. I'm going to cross the wires. How long will it take to get to town? We leave now. Three hours, maybe four. It'll be night by then. It'll be night here, too. But we have shelter here. Oh, this isn't shelter enough. Let's go. Thank you. 
قتلن It's true! It's true! It's true!